Good afternoon. It is Monday, October 8th, 2018. This is your Island Blader speaking. Well, first of all, before I get into the jet game, I must say this. Uh, before, before the game actually started, and I'm sure I speak for a lot of jet fans when I saw this um, on TV, it was kind of insulting to watch all those orange-clad fans at the stadium yesterday. I mean, I understand going to a Jet game now these days is expensive as anything with the PSLs and everything else. But, I mean, it's understood. I mean, it's a pain in the butt and you go to any sporting event, but going to MetLife Stadium takes the cake. But, I mean, my goodness. I mean, were those people in those orange, was that Fairweather fans? Or did those people legitimately come from Colorado? To fly east. I mean, listen, New York is a tourist city. We know this, you know, but but come on, really? And I'm sure in Colorado, it's a very miserable Monday. Their baseball team, the Rockies, were eliminated uh, from the postseason yesterday as well. So, miserable Sunday for them. But my goodness, it reminded me, <clears throat> I mean, you'd expect it from Steelers fans, expect it from Cowboy fans, and to an extent, Patriot fans. But the Patriots are also closer in geography, so it would make sense. But, like, if you think about it, it sort of reminds me a couple of years back when the Seattle Seahawks came to MetLife uh, to play the Jets. And it was insulting listening to all those Seattle Seahawks fans. Did they really cross the country to see this? Or were, you know, since the Seahawks were, like, legitimately good, I mean, since they were, like, you know, the true Super Bowl contenders that they were, uh, were those people really, you know... I'm sure they jumped onto someone else's fan. But next thing, next thing you know, they'll go to, uh, you know, who else is good? You know, the Jaguars bandwagon or, you know, for the lack of fan base they have in Jacksonville. Maybe they'll go to L.A. Who knows? You know, hate those kind of fans. But, but anyway, there was so, I mean, I had never seen, I mean, the orange, looking at that orange was so disgusting. I mean, someone said it. You might as well think the Miami Hurricanes were playing with the mix of the orange and the jet green. But nonetheless, so for all those Denver Bronco fans, uh, number one, yeah, good chunky were there. Number two, uh, sorry you wasted your time because I'll tell you one thing, you know, much as the Jets got off to that slow start as they did, I mean, they recovered big time and they just dominated it. They dictated and did, and just dominated the game. And, you know, I loved what I saw. I mean, they shredded the Broncos. I mean, the Jets, I mean, for a team that used to philosophize defense, you know, a couple of guys are still there, you know, like Von Miller. I mean, Von Miller was non-existent. The only thing Von Miller did yesterday, he had that one batted pass. Darnold had three bad, you know, three batted passes, uh, three passes batted down yesterday. Uh, one ended up being for an interception early in the third quarter. But all else, I mean, the quarter, the funny part, Sam Darnold was only 10 of 22. That's like a Tim Tebow performance. But a lot of the yardage he did have came on, you know, big plays. You know, the big 76 yard at Anderson. Yeah, 70, it was 76 yards. You know, the bomb where, you know, uh, he's still running from, uh, what's his face, Bradley? Roby, whatever his name is. Like, he's still running from him. And, I mean, my goodness, Roby was like, he got shredded big time yesterday. I mean, Roby got victimized twice by Robbie Anderson for touchdowns. Um, he had the right intention and coverage, but my good bre- I mean, Roby was just destroyed. But of course, the main G- the main reason why the Jets won this game yesterday was because of the run game. I mean, I mean, how many yards did they have? Like three hundred fifty something, you know, between between um, Isaiah Crowell and Bilal Powell. I mean, P- Powell put the ball on the ground early on in the game, which led to the the Bronco touchdown. Um, you know, all else, I mean, Isaiah Crowell just went crazy. I mean, getting getting that touchdown early in the second quarter, 77 yards. I mean, he, he just took, I mean, he had he had quite a game. And, and you know, watching it on TV, the Bronco defense, th- there was just a lot of holes open for the, for the Jet running backs to just run. There was like, there were a lot of times there's like not a Bronco in sight. Or they were just like playing off the ball. I mean, it was... It was it was beautiful, and the offensive line. How about them? They, you know, for all the, <clears throat> for all the, you know, for all the crap that we'd given them, you know, recently, you know, the offensive line played perhaps their best game, 
you know, this season, you know, of the year. I give them, you know, you got to credit them for that. Obviously, the Detroit game was the Detroit game, but like, you know, they that was a very, very complete performance out of the offensive line. Um, the defense did their thing. You know, Big Cat Leonard Williams had probably the game of his career for the first time in since probably 2015. Um, you know, they got to Case Keenum. You know, they, they frustrated him all game long. I mean, he had 300-something yards, but of course, most of that came in garbage time. You know, so. But all else, I mean. And of course, you know, with that touchdown to Demarius Thomas there. And, um, and of course, the most hilarious play of it all, actually, Marcus May. <laughs> Solidifying the 34-16 to win. I'm like, come on, Jets. Just come on. Make it a three-possession game. You know, don't don't make it two. What do you you know, the ball gets deflected into Marcus May's hands. It's just like, all right, sit on the ball, get the touchback, have Darnold kneel the clock out, whatever. So this guy goes, <laughs> he's running and he's like slowing down. I'm like, well, now what? He's, he's trying to follow his blockers, see if he can get into the end zone or something. Dude is still running. I'm like, what are you doing? And then finally, he's running, thinking he has the space. <laughs> He gets taken down at the one yard line. I'm like, are you kidding me, man? Dude, it actually was it was kind of good for a laugh. It was, but um, but yeah, it was. So that was a pretty defining moment. But all else, uh, you know, it's kind of comical. I don't know. I was a little concerned, saying, is he hurt? Did he injure something? But nah, he probably just he just ran out of gas. You know, it happens. Trust me, if the game were on the line, it'd probably be a different story. But whatever. But anyway, yes. So all else, I mean, I you know, this is an impressive performance. You know, I mean, for Denver, I mean, that kid, what's his name, Philip Lindsay, whatever. He was taken off like it was a burst of speed to take off during the game there. You know, at the beginning of the game, I'm like, oh my gosh, we got to contend with this. And I mean, you had to take on a, you also have to take on a Bronco team that, you know, had a short week. You know, they had a short week. Instead of, you know, most teams that, you know, have to go to the opposite coast, east to west, west to east, whatever, they usually, you know, fly out two days before the game. And, you know, Vance Joseph, the head coach, decides to fly him out Saturday. Like, you're not going to let him get acclimated for at least a day or two, you know, to the eastern time zone. I mean, especially when the Broncos have a few games where they have to fly. You know, they flew to Baltimore and they have to go to Cincinnati. It's like... You gotta get you gotta get your team acclimated to the Eastern Time Zone. You, you have to, you know. He decides, oh, let's fly him out a day before. Like, come on, man. But nonetheless, you know, it took a like I said, it took a little while. It took a little while for the Jets to get started, but once they did, they took off. And you know, it was it's just today was one of those. You know, yesterday was one of those days. You know, you were pleased with the performance. And um, I have to add this: my son was watching the game. You know, he watched a good part of the game with me. You know. You know, it's not easy when you have to stream these things, you know, to, to watch a game for free. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how many channels I had to go through? There was one, actually, where it got interrupted, where it was on the little corner thing, you know, because of a big accident that happened in Albany, like, or just like 40 miles west of Albany or something, where 20 people were killed in a, some sort of limo crash or something like that. So that interrupted the game for about a good 10 minutes or so with the the game was like right in the corner, so it was kind of hard to see what was going on. But nonetheless, um, what else there? See, so yeah, my son was enjoying the game with me. You know, I had him in his Jets onesie and whatever. And uh, after the last touchdown there to Pryor, you know, the, the beautiful one-handed you know grab that he made. Yeah, so I decided to put a little video of my son, right? And I posted it, and you hear him like, "Yeah, touchdown!" Yeah. We win. <laughs> it was cute. My son is 16 months old. He's, he's something else, but he's like, we win. <laughs> oh, it was great. I loved it. It was a cute moment. But anyway, another thing that uh, I need to get into, and it happened league wide. You know, in a lot of games, you know, ask the Giants this question because they were, you know, they were hosed yesterday um, in the final uh, minute or two in Carolina. And it was voiced by other coaches too. Mike Tomlin, even in a blowout win, said it, you know, for Pittsburgh yesterday. There were, I mean, the Denver Broncos were lucky that the score was not worse than what it was. You know, because, I mean, 
you know, the ensuing drive after the Broncos, you know, took the lead there, the early, you know, 7 nothing lead, you know, the Jets are driving downfield, they're methodically, you know, Isaiah Crowell, blah, 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 you know, they're, you know, they're methodically going down the field, and then from about the 20 or so yard line, maybe it was the 15, I forget where it was, you know, Donald throws down the middle intended for Jermaine Curse, and, the, you know, the defender is all over Jermaine Curse, and you're like, you're like, pass interference, right? You see no flag, and you're like, like, are you kidding me? So there was that, and then Jason Myers comes on and actually misses an easy field goal, and you walk away, you're like, you're thinking this is going to be a disaster of an afternoon. All things considered, the last three weeks, you know, you're thinking, you're thinking, oh my goodness. But then there was another play, I think it was in the third quarter it was the third quarter yeah because the Jets went right to left in the third quarter you know where uh, I think it was Anunwa somebody another clear as day the guy's getting his jersey tugged I think it was by, by Chris Harris and he's getting his jersey tugged like hey you know and Anunwa was going for the ball and it's like pass interference something you know that's another touchdown taken away I think they got a field goal. I, I don't remember what happened. Another questionable thing was on a punt where, what's his face, Cannon, who had ball control issues during the preseason. You know, he he signaled for a fair catch, and then he kind of bobbled it, and the Denver player ripped it out, and they recovered. And they said, no, it's Jets football. Vance Joseph challenged the play, but then they upheld the ruling. Very questionable call. Excuse me, but I mean, it's very questionable. The, the officiating is very, very questionable these days. You know, you have more roughing the passive penalties more than anything this year. You know, you've had players getting ejected left and right. I believe the Chiefs, you know, they went over the Jags yesterday and two players ejected. One came from, you know, Mr. Riveron, Rivieron in, the, uh, in Manhattan. You know, we all love him, right? But it's uh, the officiating was very questionable yesterday's game all around. But it was it was absurd the calls that they missed. You know, you know, two pass interference is clear as day in the end zone. Come on, man. So didn't matter. But like I said, the I mean the Jets should have could have easily scored in the forties. I mean, you know, it's I mean obviously you know it's a moot point now being that they got the win. The point is the officiating. It's just bogus. It's terrible, but nonetheless, nonetheless, nonetheless. So to sum up, Isaiah Crowell got a new rushing record today, two, uh, yesterday rather, 219 yards on the ground. I remember when Thomas Jones had the 210 uh, back in 2009. I remember that game very well. The Jets actually lost that game. But um, but yeah, no, Crowell is impressive. He's, you know, it seems like, you know, Todd Bowles, you know, the message to him after what happened in the Cleveland game with him Wiping his butt and then, of course, the endorsement nonsense with the toilet paper. You know, Bowles must have lit a fire under him because ever since then, he's just been, you know, think about, you know, his performance yesterday was like, you know, heck yeah. You know, and, um, you know, like I said, Darnold may have only completed 10 passes out of 22. But again, you know, you know, like I said, the big play to Anderson, you know, he was wide open, took off at speed. That and then you know the little plays, little plays, you know that third down pass to Curse in the uh, third quarter there, you know when it felt like Denver was maybe trying to stay in the game, you know what I mean? So he's he's you know Donald is growing a little bit, you know they've they've taken the cuffs off of him a little bit, you know since the Cleveland game, you know it's been two games, but you know what, <clears throat> you know he was pretty impressive yesterday. Obviously, obviously the game you know goes to the ground game. The ground game of course shredded it up. And, um, you know, Big Cat, and the huge game he had. You know, Claiborne was decent. You know, and while this, we didn't have Tremaine Johnson yesterday. You know, probably still getting burned by Dante Moncrief from last week. But, but no, actually he had a quad injury and he was listed as out effective Friday. So, we'll see what happens. Anyway, summing it up. Colts next week. Okay. One in four Indianapolis Colts. On, big, on more rest. You know, they played on Thursday night. Now. Here's the thing, the Jets, and this happened a couple of times last year, where they had victories against playoff teams, right? And they go play a crappy team the following week and have a letdown performance. 
You know, that's the only thing that scares me, you know, about the Jets. You know, mind you, I do have Eric Ebron on my fantasy team. But, you know, who, by the way, because of him, got me a narrow victory yesterday. And me and my mom, rather. But, but like, you can't, you know, I said, you cannot have a letdown for words. You're at home, you know, playing against the last, you have to show. And what's the, what's the status of the couple of these Indianapolis players? T.Y. Hilton, you know, one of the tight ends is actually hurt. How were they, who's that? Doyle, whatever his name is. How are... Are, are the Colts completely healthy? If not, you got to swallow that up. You know? The Jets could be 3-3. Three and Because three, Minnesota's going to be a tough game. I mean, Minnesota and then Chicago after that. I mean, now's, now's the time to really step up and win the two games that you should have won. Okay? This game yesterday, you got the W. Got to beat up the Colts. You got to beat the Colts next week. You have to. You know, Minnesota's going to be tough. You know, they won yesterday in Philadelphia, but, you know, they had that game marked on their calendar. But, you know, Chicago, where the Bears are going, yeah, good luck with Khalil Mack, right? But um, but nonetheless, like, you know, Indianapolis is a must win, you know. It's a must win. You have to win that game, you know. But anyway, can't sleep on it. Now, next Sunday, Jets and Colts. I believe they're wearing all white. You know, and they're also, you know, paying tribute, 50th anniversary since the Super Bowl. How fitting. Anyway, this is Island Blader signing off for now, saying deuces, and we will talk next week, Monday.